Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Five weeks ago, at the beginning of our Lenten journey together, we started by planting a seed in a pile of ashes. And this seed was going to be, is the symbol really of our Lenten journey this year. Part of that emerged from the fact that we've been buried underneath this pandemic for the past year. And part of that image came from the story that we hear in the gospel today about Jesus talking about how a seed planted multiplies and grows. Jesus, in this story, obviously is first talking about his own death and interpreting that for his followers and for really for most of us, for all of us who will follow, uh, follow his way. It's an image of a seed falling to the ground and then bursting up into new life and then seeds being spread over the world. And this indeed is what has come to pass. In Jesus' death and resurrection, it wasn't the end, as the people who killed him had hoped it would be, but the beginning of thousands, of millions, of billions of seeds scattered around the world, bringing love and compassion wherever they're deeply planted. But the seed is about something else, too, because Jesus quickly pivots to talk about his individual followers, and talks about the need for them to choose. When Jesus says you have to hate your life, whenever he uses that hate and love dichotomy, he's saying you have to choose between two things. And today when he says you have to hate your life in this world, Jesus is talking about the world he sees all around them or all around him and them. He's talking about this world that's filled with violence and abuse where the powerful take advantage of the weak and people hurt one another. It's a world you and I still see every day. It's the world we hate when we see it on the news and we say, how can people treat each other this way? And so in this story Following the seed, Jesus says, you need to hate that life so that you can imagine and live into a new life, what he calls eternal life. And he's not talking about going to heaven after we die. He's talking about God's kingdom, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. You need to hate this kind of world that you see so that we can live in to a new world. So that's one part of the story, but I think it goes a little deeper and we're helped by the prophecy and the promise of Jeremiah, where he says, I'm going to make a new covenant with the people of Israel where the law will be written on their hearts that God will intervene and change people's hearts. And that's where I'd really like to follow our little metaphor today. You see, I often think of the human heart like a seed. There's all this life inside, all this potential inside, and it's surrounded by a hard covering. There's No accident, right, that God often talks about the greatest human sickness is a hardened heart. You see, what I think Jesus is calling his followers to in this new world is a changed heart. And so today, what would that mean 
to change our hearts. How does a changed heart happen? Or to use the image of a seed, how does that little life break out through the shell to grow again? It seems to me that there are two forces at work. Jeremiah talks about a covenant. A covenant, in in the godly sense, in the Christian sense, a covenant is that reality that God gifts us with power and with a will that our lives would be full, and we, as people, shape our lives so that we can receive that gift from God. So a covenant is a partnership. And in this case, a partnership in changing our hearts. So how does that work? Well, I think in this covenant, it works in two ways. The first is that it's a gift from God, that it's God's power at work. Firstly, the first thing, it's God's power at work that changes our heart. And when I think about this, I think about Fred Beekner's image, the image of recognizing where God is moving. And the way Beekner talks about it is he says that whatever moves you to tears, that's telling you something. So, for instance, when the Berlin Wall came down, I was moved to tears. What an, an incredible moment. The world was changing. At the beginning of one of my favorite Christmas movies, Love Actually, the scene is of people at the airport, you know, coming from far away to spend Christmas together. And that moves me to tears. In the movie Just Mercy, for instance, where somebody puts themselves out there, Brian Stevenson puts himself out there for these poor people who have been unjustly imprisoned to set them free. That inspires me. It moves me to to tears. And those are the places where we can recognize God acting and moving. And, And those are places that inspire our hearts, that grow our hearts to become broader than they were before, to see things in a new way, to see other people before us as people and not as problems or objects. God is at work nurturing that life, that eternal life, in the midst of our hearts. But we also have to hate the world that John was talking about. And that's both socially, in other words, choosing not that world, that broken world, but it's also true in our hearts. We have to be able to recognize those places that build up the shell that surrounds the life. We come by so many of these places honestly, don't we? Uh, Any type of abuse or neglect in our own lives builds the shell. Sometimes disappointment builds the shell. Fear builds the shell. And the shell is made up of worrying about our reputation. Sometimes the shell is made up of worrying about whether we'll have enough. The shell is all those things we do to protect what we think is life. And yet, it's not really life. And the stronger we build the shell, the harder it is for the real life to emerge. And so I guess that, for me, is the wonder of Lent. It's the wonder of the Easter story. It's the wonder of the Christian life. Of being in this kind of relationship with God that sets us free from the shell that, in the end, doesn't protect us, but locks us in and receiving the gift of life that can emerge and grow. And as Jesus said, bear bear fruit, bear a thousand times the number of seeds than the one that we let die. That's partially why we've been using this examine, and so maybe we can see the examine, this process of thanksgiving and prayer 
to help our hearts emerge in this season. So let me walk through the examine with you, thinking about this image of the seed. And so we begin in the examine, if you'll take a deep breath. We begin in this examine by noticing those things for which we're grateful. What is it in this day, in this past week, in the difficulties of this past year that has warmed your heart? Where have you seen God's loving action at work in the world? Or with your friends? in simple acts of care of your neighbors that moves you to tears and give thanks for those things. And then invite the Holy Spirit in to enlighten this time, to both help you remember more and more of those places where you've seen God acting. And also to see those those places where perhaps you've been building a shell, where you've withdrawn instead of expanded. Invite the Holy Spirit in to give light to your heart. And then we ask forgiveness. We, we look at those places where we've built the shell and we, we rest in God's grace and pray for God's power to remove those things that armor us and entomb us at the same time. And then we look forward with hope. In the world that we hate, Can you look forward to a world that is different? That God is making different? In a heart that often seems stuck in one place and not free? Can you see places where those little sprouts of new life grow each day? Can you see the places where you're planting more seeds of love around each day? Day, can you see how that is possible in your life? It is possible for the seed to grow. And it is possible, and indeed it is God's desire that we would break out of our shells that seeds would scatter throughout the earth and that the seeds would fill us with eternal life in the here and now. Because God's will is not that things should remain buried in the ground, but that they would emerge. God's will is not that we should follow a bunch of different rules, but that we would have a new heart. And so let us pray this week, as we prepare to enter Holy Week next week, for the new heart, for the sprout to come through the earth, that God's eternal life might be known in our hearts and in the world. Amen.